Yeah. Yep. Got okay, it. fantastic. Uh, and we're recording, are we? Yes, we are. Okay, fantastic. So uh, I'm, I'm going to um, give my presentation a slide at a time, uh, and it will take uh, about 20, 25 minutes of content. Uh, and Mariam has very kindly translated the text. And so after I, I give uh, a couple of minutes uh, on each slide, uh, Mariam then will go through the same slides uh, in Arabic uh, so that we have uh, a bilingual presentation. Uh, and so, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Uh, in this presentation, I would like us to consider a necessary topic, one that is even more relevant in this time of lockdown and pandemic than ever before. How do we deal with anxiety ourselves, and how do we help our children to be able to cope with the stresses and complications of life at the moment, so that they do not develop anxiety or can be helped to overcome anxiety in their own lives. Every one of us has a level of mental health, just as we have a level of physical health. What is important is that with an understanding of our orthodox spiritual tradition, we think and speak and act in such a way that we have a good level of mental health, and we learn how to improve our mental health. This is part of what it means to be a human. We cannot choose to ignore our mental health any more than we can choose to ignore our physical health. Nor is our mental health separate from our spiritual life with God, even though we will see that the mind and the spirit are not the same things. If we have a physical illness, then we seek a medicine or therapy that will help us. If we feel ourselves far from God, then we seek the spiritual medicine of confession and the Eucharist with prayer. It is no different with the mind, which can also be disturbed in various ways. Loneliness, boredom, stress, anger, addiction, low self-esteem, as well as anxiety, are all aspects of human life which almost all of us will experience at one time or another. These are conditions of the mind that also have a spiritual aspect. And so we address these problems with an understanding of the mind as well as of the spirit. Thank you, Mary. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, Abuna can um, be all in the al topic al hadith bta al-naharda مهم جدا عموما بس اكتر في فتره الحجر والكورونا اللي احنا فيها ازاي بنتعامل مع القلق او التوتر شخصيا وكمان ازاي نعلم ولادنا يتعاملوا معاه ويتغلبوا عليه لو حصل لهم المشكله دي كل واحد مننا عنده صحه عقليه زي الصحه الجسديه وعقيدتنا الارثوذكسيه بتساعدنا بشكل مباشر ان احنا تكون صحتنا العقلية احسن والانسان ما بيقدرش يفصل صحته العقلية عن الجسدية وكمان الصحة العقلية مش منفصلة عن علاقتنا الروحية مع ربنا بالرغم من العقل والروح مش نفس الشيء على سبيل المثال لما يكون عندنا مشكلة صحية بنحاول ندور على العلاج uh, لو عندنا مشكلة روحية حسينا بنحس بنبقى عايزين نقرب من ربنا بنصلي نصوم ونعترف uh, نفس المنطق بنطبقه على العقل uh, اللي بتأثر بعوامل كتيرة زي الوحدة الملل الضغط العصبي الغضب uh, التوتر عدم الثقة بالنفس uh, كلها حاجات بنحس بيها في وقت من حياتنا وهي مشاكل ليها علاقة بالعقل والروح و... وعن... وبنعالجها ان احنا نفهم عقلنا وكمان نفهم روحنا. Okay, Abuna. Yep, done. Okay, let's just go to the next slide. <laughs> I want slide 10, sorry. There we go. Slide 2. Anxiety is a human condition which includes mental and physical symptoms of excessive anxiety and worry, fatigue, restlessness, impaired concentration, irritability, and difficulty sleeping. It can be experienced so intensely that it leads to a racing heart, difficulty breathing, and panic. 
it is a serious condition and should not be confused with simply being a little worried about something. On the contrary, it has lasting effects and begins to interfere with life. Because it has physical, mental and spiritual effects, and because it has aspects caused by physical, mental and spiritual conditions, it must be treated and prevented in a holistic manner, which is what I would like to consider briefly together. Anxiety is not a sin, just as loneliness or having a low self-esteem is not a sin. It is not simply solved by praying more, though we need to consider the effect of sin and the role of the spiritual life in overcoming anxiety. We should not judge those who are facing anxiety as being weak or a failure. They may be our own children or members of our own family. We may be struggling with anxiety ourselves. It is part of the experience of broken human beings seeking to grow into closer union with God and a greater experience of being truly human. Abuna can be all in the ala will torture be usar ala 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 سرعة الغضب مشاكل النوم ولو كان القلق ده شديد جدا ممكن بيسبب سرعة ضربات القلب مشاكل التنفس ولازم نفرق بين لما بيكون عندنا قلق بسيط بسبب مشكلة معينة ولما بيتحول لحالة مرضية بتأثر على حياتنا بشكل جسدي وعقلي وعلى الروح كمان فعشان كده عشان نعالج المشاكل دي كلها لازم ناخد كل النواحي دي في الاعتبار وده اللي أبونا هيتكلم عنه النهاردة القلق والتوتر مش خطية زي الشعور بالوحدة وعدم ثقة بالنفس دول كلهم مش خطايا فمش هيكون الحل ببساطة ان احنا نصلي اكتر بس ده ما يمنعش ان احنا لازم ناخد في الاعتبار تأثير الخطية والالتزام الروحي على موضوع الشعور بالقلق ولازم ما نحكمش على الناس اللي بيعانوا من القلق على ان ده ضعف او فشل لان ممكن الناس دي تكون في يوم من الايام انت او عيلتك او اولادك فلازم نكون نشوف الموضوع ان هو كلنا بشر تحت الضعف وبنحاول دايما نقوي علاقتنا بربنا وده هيحسن حياتنا بشكل عام اوكي ابونا شكرا anxiety is a widespread problem and condition Almost no one is immune from the risk of experiencing anxiety. And as parents, we will wish to do all that we can to prevent our children becoming anxious and to help them overcome it if it becomes a burden for them. There were 8 million diagnosed cases of anxiety in the UK in 2013 and many more undiagnosed. 50% of all common mental disorders such as anxiety are already established in children aged 14. And 75% of such conditions are already established by the age of 24. Our children are vulnerable. And if we suffer from anxiety, then it is likely that our own childhoods contributed to our condition. The exact causes of anxiety in any particular person are not known. It is affected by the chemistry of the brain and other aspects of our physical health and condition. It is often established by experiences, especially in childhood or in trauma, which have a lasting and a harmful effect on us, so that we become liable to anxiety even when the immediate causes do not seem justified. Um, uh, وممكن تحصل لأي حد مننا ودور الأباء والأمهات إن هم يحموا أولادهم أو يساعدوا يساعدوهم لو حسوا إن عندهم المشكلة دي في 2018 2013 تم تشخيص 8 مليون حالة بالقلق المرضي وحالات أكتر ما تمش رصدها أو تشخيصها 50% من الأمراض العقلية زي القلق المرضي بتصيب أطفال من سن صغير زي 14 سنة 75% من الحالات دي بتحصل على سن زي 24 سنة الأطفال معرضين للإصابة بالقلق والتوتر ولو اتعرضنا للإصابة وإحنا بالغين فأكيد فترة الطفولة كان لها تأثير 
ان يحصل لنا كده الاسباب المؤديه للقلق المرضي مش معروفه بالتحديد بس عموما كيمياء المخ والحاله الصحيه ليهم تاثير على الحاله العقليه بس زي ما قلنا ان الاحداث المؤلمه والحزينه في الطفوله ليها دور على حالتنا العقليه حتى لو التاثير ما ظهرش في لحظتها ممكن يظهر بعد كده اوكي يا بونا anxiety is especially caused by our thoughts the modern practice of cognitive behavioral therapy or cbt puts into a simple form what the fathers of the desert understood more than 1500 years ago our thoughts memories and imagination create a model of the world they say things about ourselves about others about the world and about god these thoughts memories and imaginations are not always apparent to us they can become habitual and buried inside us but it is these thoughts which produce feelings in us if these thoughts are negative destructive and harmful then the feelings we experience will also be negative destructive and harmful these harmful feelings then lead us to behaviors which we hope will help us to avoid further hurt but which usually lead to even more negative thoughts and worse feelings in a downward spiral we can see how this might happen even in the example of this presentation when i was asked to prepare it there were various thoughts which could have come into my mind these thoughts might have said to me i need to produce the best presentation ever or it will be rubbish i don't have the qualifications to say anything people won't find anything i say interesting or useful if i listen to these thoughts and a person dealing with anxiety finds it hard not to listen to these thoughts this whispering voice then i would feel very negative about myself i would feel anxious and worried i would feel that i was worthless and without value this would be the natural feeling to have if these thoughts were true and if i had these feelings then i would do things to try and cope with them i might say that i couldn't do the presentation after all or that i was too busy with something else i might say that i suddenly felt ill and go to bed and ask someone else to give my apologies but this behavior would make me have further negative thoughts i might say to myself there we are i knew i wouldn't be able to do it now i can't speak to any of those people ever again i've let everyone down i can't do anything and these thoughts will produce their own negative destructive and harmful feelings of anxiety and shame and embarrassment and isolation and so the cycle of anxiety goes on and on getting worse and worse shukran maria um abuna can be all in the القلق المرضي بينبع من افكارنا والعلاج السلوكي المعرفي الحديث بيؤكد كلام اباء الكنيسه من 1500 سنه ان عالمنا هو مزيج من افكارنا ذكرياتنا وخيالاتنا وكل ده بيشكل فكرتنا عن نفسنا والاخرين والعالم المحيط بينا وكمان علاقتنا بربنا Um, الأفكار والذكريات اللي مش بنفهمهم أو مش بنعبر عنهم بشكل صحيح بيفضلوا كاملين جوانا وبيكونوا مشاعرنا اللي بنحسها بعد كده لو الأفكار اللي عندنا دي سلبية ومدمرة فمشاعرنا هتكون انعكاس للأفكار دي هي كمان هتكون سلبية وبالتالي هنتصرف سلوكيات سلبية اللي احنا شايفينها من وجهة نظرنا انها هتساعدنا نهرب من الموقف اللي, اللي فيه التفكير السلبي ده كل ده بيخلينا بن بنلف في دايره مفرغه وبنحس بمشاعر اسوء ابونا قال مثال لما طلب منه يعمل برزنتيشن النهارده كان ممكن يفكر في افكار زي ان انا لازم اعمل احسن برزنتيشن غير كده هيكون ملهاش لازمه او ان ما عنديش خبره ان انا اقول اي حاجه مفيده او الناس اللي هتحضر مش هيعجبها المحاضره ومش هتستفيد حاجه لو ابونا سمع واقتنع بالافكار دي اللي هي هتكون شبه الافكار اللي بيحسها الشخص اللي عنده قلق مرضي ومش قادر يتحكم في الافكار السلبيه ساعتها ابونا كان هيحس ان ما عندوش 
قيمه او فايده يقدمها ويتهرب من الموقف ان هو يقول مش هقدر اقدم المحاضره النهارده او تعبت فجاه ويعتذر وهيكون شايف ان كده الموقف اتحل بس بالعكس هيكون في احساس سلبي اكتر ان هو يحس انه انا هيقول لنفسه ان انا ما كنتش عارف اتكلم النهارده ومش هقدر اواجه الناس او اكلم ال اي حد من اللي طلب مني اعمل المحاضره دي تاني وان انا خذلت كل الناس ومش ناجح في اي حاجه كل ده احساس بالذنب والاحباط والعزله ودائره الافكار دي هتستمر وهتكون اسوء اوكي بونا we may be struggling with such thoughts feelings and behaviors ourselves and perhaps we are already seeking the appropriate support to overcome them but we surely want our own children to avoid being subject to such a condition to such thoughts and feelings and if they are struggling then we certainly want to help them overcome anxiety there are practical and physical things that make a difference because one aspect of anxiety is caused and sustained by our physiology our human body and its mechanisms again anxiety is not just a matter of temporarily being worried about something but developing persistent negative thoughts and feelings and these can be moderated and prevented to some degree by the physical practices of exercise diet and sleep this is true for ourselves if we are struggling we need to make sure that we are exercising daily that we adopt a healthy diet and that we get a healthy amount of sleep each of these helps to change our body chemistry in a positive way but this is also necessary for our children if our children are young then we can make sure that the habits of our home are built around these they make a positive difference if our children are older then it is not so easy but we should certainly encourage exercise in whatever imaginative way is possible we should provide healthy diet and try to encourage sleep at the right time uh, and in the right amount this will not solve everything at all but it is a necessary means of preventing anxiety and many other problems and also working towards overcoming them just going for a walk each day changes the way we feel by adjusting our physiology and allowing our thoughts to be cleared a little these practical actions make a difference and are necessary habits for physical and mental health in ourselves and in our children shukran mari أم أبونا كان بيقول إن كلنا ممكن بنمر بأفكار ومشاعر سلبية زي دي وممكن نكون بندور على مساعدة مساعدة عشان نتغلب عليها بس الأكيد إن إحنا مش عايزين أولادنا يمروا بنفس الأفكار أو لو حصل كده نحاول نساعدهم أم في حاجات عملية ممكن تساعدنا نتغلب على القلق و بنتكلم هنا على القلق المرضي المزمن والافكار السلبيه مش القلق البسيط العادي الحاجات دي زي الرياضه والاكل الصحي والنوم الكافي نحاول نتحرك كل يوم نمشي شويه ناكل بشكل صحي وننام كويس كل ده بيساعد ينظم كميه الجسم ونفس الكلام ينطبق على اولادنا لازم نحاول يكون عندهم روتين أكل كويس ورياضة ونوم ونساعدهم في البيت على كده ونعودهم على العادات الصحية سواء كان أولادنا صغيرين أو أكبر شوية. Okay, Abuna. Thank you. I'm going to speak about our orthodox spiritual life in due course, but we need to be clear that anxiety has a variety of aspects which need their own treatment. Those who are in a very serious and chronic state of anxiety may also need medical therapy to change the chemistry of the brain so that help and healing in these other ways becomes possible. For those struggling with difficult feelings but not yet in such an extreme condition, and for those of us wishing to help our children avoid anxiety, we can ensure that physical actions are part of daily life. But we have to also consider the psychological causes of anxiety. I gave some examples of negative thoughts that might have come to my mind when I was asked to give this presentation. In fact, these thoughts do not come from nowhere. 
They are usually the sort of things that we have been told in the past or that we have come to imagine must be true. Our anxiety is caused by the thoughts which describe the world to us. If a child is always told that it is useless and that everything it does is rubbish, then very often the child will grow into an adult who believes that they are useless and that everything they do is indeed rubbish and not worth very much. A child who grows up in a household where the parents are always shouting and arguing and where they take out their anger on a child with loud and angry voices will make the child afraid to do anything that could cause such an outburst. It will make them very afraid of disagreeing with anyone or presenting their own ideas or of being very visible. As they felt they had to hide away as a child, they will hide away as an adult. Shukran. Um, أبونا كان بيقول إن إحنا هنتكلم عن الحياة الروحية كمان شوية uh, بس لازم نأكد إن القلق المرضي uh, محتاج أشكال علاج مختلفة وممكن يوصل uh, لعلاج بالأدوية عشان uh, نعدل كمية المخ و... ونعالج المشكلة ونحاول زي ما قلنا كمان نعمل حاجات زي الرياضة والأكل الصحي والنوم الكافي um, وكمان لازم نفكر في الأسباب السيكولوجية زي ما قلنا المثال اللي أبونا قاله عن البرزنتيشن النهاردة الأفكار اللي جات له السلبية اللي هو لما طلب منه يعمل برزنتيشن الأفكار دي مش بتكون من فراغ بس ممكن تكون حاجات سمعناها قبل كده حد قالها لنا أو اعتقادات عندنا عشان كده لازم نفكر كويس بنقول إيه لأولادنا يعني مثلا لو قلنا لهم أنتوا مالكوش لازمة مش نافعين في أي حاجة آه لما يكبروا هيكون عندهم الأفكار السلبية دي عن نفسهم إن هم ما لهمش لازمة آه وكمان لما بيكون في خلافات في البيت والأب والأم على طول بيتخانقوا وبيزعقوا وبيطلعوا الغضب على أولادهم ده بينعكس على الأطفال لما بيكبروا فمثلا بيكونوا خايفين يختلفوا مع أي حد في الرأي أحسن يكون اللي هو النتيجة إن هم يتخانقوا يخافوا يكون عندهم وجهة نظر وحاجات زي كده okay. أبونا. The way that we speak to children and the way we treat them and the sort of view of the world which we create for them may lead them to experience anxiety in children, childhood and for the rest of their lives. It may be that we appear to demand excellence before we will give any praise or show any love. This might not mean be what we mean to do. But if our words and actions express this view of the world, then this is what our children might well grow up with. I have to be the best at everything or I am worth nothing. I have to be the best at everything or it's not worth trying. I have to be the best at everything or no one will ever love me. We can even be protective of our children to such an extent that we also teach them that the world is dangerous and frightening and they are likely to experience harm in almost everything and from almost everybody. This is a real danger in a time of pandemic when we can give the impression that everyone outside our family represents a threat and the possibility of harm. A child who comes to believe that they must do the best, not just their own best, but be better than everyone else or they are not worthy of love and are without value, will likely grow up to be anxious because these ideas will be the thoughts that come to mind whenever they are asked to do something. Even when studying at school or college or university, even when studying within their own abilities, anxiety can appear as a result of the stress of study and the voice in the mind which says, you must be the best or you are worthless. And the one who cannot be the best assumes they are worthless, as their thoughts tell them. It was not the lesson their parents intended, but it was the lesson which the child learned. So a capable student begins to be unable to sleep, unable to concentrate, becomes irritable and unable to focus on anything. This reinforces their sense of worthlessness. It was just as the voice said, if you cannot be the best of all, then you are worth nothing. 
If you cannot be the best of all, then it will seem that the world will erupt in frightening violence. All of these things are things we teach a child without meaning to at all. Shukran. Um, Abuna can be all in al Torea Elebn Kellem of Natamel Biha, my Auladna, with Kunze Alam, Benechla Ulium, Ubianakis Alium Lamaik Boru. وممكن يؤدي لمشاكل زي القلق ومشاكل تانية زي ما قلنا لو كانت طريقتنا سلبية معاهم لو على طول بنطلب منهم الكمال في كل حاجة من غير حب وتشجيع مننا بنوصلهم بطريقة غير مباشرة إن لو ما كنتش أحسن واحد في كل حاجة محدش هيحبني أو ما فيش لازمة من المحاولات لو كانت فشلة أنا لازم أنجح بس وما فيش مجال لحاجة غير كده وممكن كمان الخوف الزائد على أولادنا بيخليهم خايفين يتعاملوا مع أي حد برا محيطهم بالذات دلوقتي في فترة الكورونا ممكن خوفنا الزايد يخلي أولادنا خايفين يتعاملوا مع أي حد برا العيلة شايفينه خطر عليهم ولازم يبعدوا عنه ويكمل الإحساس ده معاهم حتى بعد ما تنتهي الكورونا مثلا إحساس الخوف من الفشل ده بيخلي الطفل الآن دايما وبيوصل أقصى مرحلة بالذات في وقت الدراسة والجامعة وممكن يأثر عليهم في النوم والتركيز عشان كده لازم نركز كويس في كلامنا مع أولادنا والرسائل المباشرة أو غير المباشرة اللي ممكن يفهموها من كلامنا معهم Thanks أبونا What are we to do? for ourselves and our children. <coughs> the problem is, to a great extent, our thoughts. But our thoughts are not always true. The Desert Fathers understood this. Just because we think something does not mean that we have to allow it to take root in our heart and become part of who we are. Just because we or our children have constructed a view of the world in which we are small and insignificant likely to be harmed, unable to achieve anything and unworthy of love, does not mean that this is a true view of the world. Cognitive behavioral therapy provides tools to help us think about our thoughts and begin to correct them when they are wrong. I need to produce the best presentation ever or it will be rubbish. Then I need to correct this thought. It is not true. I do not need to produce the best presentation that has ever been given by anyone in human history. I need to produce something that is hopefully helpful in a small way. That is a different thought. It is not a thought that makes me anxious, but the wrong thought that my presentation must be the best one ever given by anyone or it will be rubbish would make anyone anxious if it was true, but it is not true. If we can't correct the thought, then cognitive behavioral therapy and our own orthodox spiritual tradition also teaches us that changing our behavior can also help. I could say to myself, well, I can't give the presentation, but I can produce it, even if I never use it. To change our behavior can also change our thoughts and improving our thoughts prove that our first thoughts were wrong and thereby create better feelings and better outcomes. Shukran, Mary. Um, Abuna can be all in the same way as we said. Of course, we have to be in the same way. We have to be in the same way. We have to be in the same way. كانت الأفكار دي سلبية الحاجة هو العلاج المعرفي السلوكي اللي بيدينا طرق نتعامل بسيطرة على القلق ال... المزمن والأفكار السلبية اللي عندنا ونصححها المثال اللي أبونا قاله اللي هو لازم أعمل أحسن برزنتيشن في التاريخ غير كده مش هينفع فكرة زي كده ممكن صح ان انا اقول لنفسي ما فيش حاجه حصلت في التاريخ ان حد مثلا عمل برزنتيشن فكره احسن برزنتيشن دي 
ممكن تخلي اي حد قلقان حتى لو هي فكره من الاساس الصح ان انا اقول بس ممكن اقدم حاجه تفيد الناس باي شكل حتى لو معرفه صغيره ومفيده او اقول ان انا ممكن احضر برزنتيشن مش لازم اقدمها اساعد باي شكل فدي كل دي افكار تساعد ومش تهدم وتحسس بالياس فالمجمل يعني ان احنا نغير والتفكير السلبي بنحاول نفكر بشكل ايجابي ده هيفيدنا في حياتنا عموما اوكي ثانك يو ابونا ثانك يو Can everyone mute their microphones, please, to make it easier to hear? True thoughts and positive behaviors. This is what we need to help our children experience before they are subject to anxiety. This is where I want to speak about the spiritual aspect of overcoming anxiety. The spiritual is not an optional extra, as if it was useful only for those who are religious. On the contrary, every human being has a spiritual as well as a physical and mental nature to their humanity. We cannot hope to prevent and overcome anxiety without addressing this spiritual aspect. When we read a scripture such as, do not worry about your life, are you not of more value, such as Matthew 6, 25 to 27, this sounds rather like a command, do not worry. But it should be read as a prescription, as a method of health and healing. Do not worry because you are of so much value. Value to who? Value to God. God who made you and does not want you to worry because he cares for you. If we do not want our children to be anxious as they grow up, they must know the truth and believe the truth about themselves about others and about God. They must know by our words and actions that we also value them more than anything, just as God values them more than anything. We do not want a child to grow up thinking it is worthless, and this is the truth. God himself says that none of those he has made is worthless. Indeed, each child is worth the very life of Christ himself. How do we communicate this to our children? They must see and hear that we value others and that we value each of them as God values them. Our words matter because these words will come back in their own minds and will create their view of the world. If we make it clear that we despise others, then they will learn to despise themselves. If we make it clear that we judge others, then they will learn to become critical of themselves. If we make it clear that people have to earn our attention and love and value, then this is what they will think of themselves, that they do not deserve attention or love and have no value. But this is not what God thinks. And as Orthodox parents, we have a responsibility to show our children in our words and actions that we think of ourselves, of others, and of our children in the way that God does. Our words matter, especially those directed to our partners and our children. The thoughts which produce anxiety have very often developed from our own words. What do we want our children to know? It is that they are unconditionally loved and are uniquely and eternally precious beyond compare. They must know that we want to encourage them to be the best that they can be and not compare them with others. We want them to know that God has made them to be the person they can become by growing closer to God and that they are a unique creation of God who chose to make them because he loved them and his love for them will never fail. If we communicate this in words and deeds to our children, then they have the possibility of becoming youths and adults who have a positive view of themselves. Shukran, Maria. Um, Abuna can be all um, in the Afkar and the Sulukiyat al Ajabaya. They are the ones who are going to be able to help us 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 to
و... وهنتكلم عن الطريقة الروحية المسيحية في التغلب على القلق والطريقة دي مش بس للناس المتدينة أم لا لكل الناس لأن كل إنسان ليه طبيعة روحية وجسدية وعقلية أم أبونا كان بيقول آية في إنجيل متى ستة خمسة وعشرين سبعة وعشرين اللي هي لذلك أقول لكم لا تهتموا لحياتكم بما تأكلون وبما تشربون وانظروا إلى طيور السماء إنها لا تزرع ولا تحصد ولا تجمع إلى مخازن وأبوكم السماوي يقوتها ألستم بالحرية أفضل منها ومن منكم إذا اهتم يقدر أن يزيد على قامته زراعا واحدة أبونا بيقول إن هي دي وصية ربنا بيقول لنا ما تقلقش وكمان كأنها رشدة علاج ما تقلقش لأن ليك قيمة قيمة لمين لربنا اللي خلقنا وبيرعونا وبيقول لنا ما تقلقوش ولازم نعلم كل ده لأولادنا من خلال أفعالنا وكلامنا إن إحنا بنحبهم حب غير مشروط زي ما ربنا بيحبنا في كل حالاتنا ولازم نفهم أولادنا إن لا يمكن ما يكونش ليهم لازمة إزاي يعني وربنا نفسه فدانا بابنه الوحيد لازم نعلم أولادنا كده عن طريق إن إحنا نكون قدوة ليهم فإزاي بنتعامل مع غيرنا ونعلمهم كمان إن إحنا صورة ربنا في كل حاجة بنعملها في حياتنا وإن حبنا ليهم غير مشروط ونشجعهم دايما وما نقارنهمش بأي حد ونقربهم من ربنا ونعرفهم إن حبه ليهم غير مشروط أوكي أبونا The scripture teaches us cast all your care upon him for he cares for you 1 Peter 5 verse 7 This is what we need to teach our children Not only that God does care for them with an unfailing and unconditional love and that he values them at the price of his own son, but also that we may come to God. We are to come to God as the purpose of our life, so that in this closest of relationships, we are able to lay our cares and anxieties on God, who is always present with us and in us and for us. Is this what we experience? that we are living in God's presence in every moment. This is what we need to teach our children for their salvation and to preserve them from many of the effects of mental health conditions. I do not mean that if we say our prayers, we will have no problems, but I mean that if we are living with God and if we teach our children, even the very youngest, how to live with God so that they experience his presence, then these false thoughts, these harmful and negative thoughts will lose much or most of their force. If a child knows that God loves them with an unfailing love and they experience his presence each day as an unconditional love, and if they know that God values them, whatever anyone else might say or do, then the voice that says you are not loved will be dismissed as false and untrue. Likewise, the voice that says you are worthless will not gain control over them because they will know their worth in God. This is where our effort must be directed for our children, that they might have true thoughts about themselves, the thoughts that God has about themselves and about others, that they might have true thoughts about God and both know and experience his love in each day. We teach them this by praying with them, and showing them by our own actions that prayer is the most important opportunity in every moment. We teach them this by reading the scriptures with them and showing them by our own practice that we find God speaking in every passage. We teach them this by showing them how much we value and are blessed by meeting and receiving Christ in the Eucharist. We teach them this by the way we speak to and about others and especially in the way we speak and act towards them. We teach them this by being careful to say nothing that will ever make them believe they are not loved and not valuable. We encourage them to do their best and be their best, and we never make them feel that they must earn our approval or that we are comparing them to others. 
this is not how God treats each of us. And it must not be the way that we treat others, and especially our children, whether they are our own or we are serving them in the church. What we want for them all is that they have a living relationship with God, so that at the youngest age, they feel comfortable to go to God to bring their worry and distress to God before it becomes overwhelming, to find in him a constant source of love, understanding, compassion and encouragement, even when they have failed and let themselves down. This proper understanding of God and of themselves and of others, together with the practical application of regular exercise, a healthy diet and enough sleep, will not guarantee that our children are preserved from anxiety, nor will it guarantee that they overcome it completely, but they are a necessary foundation and a strong beginning together with other therapy and together with our own efforts to be unconditionally loving and encouraging of our children. It is God's will and desire that we not be overcome with anxiety. In the life lived in union with God, we may hope to find the beginning of health and healing, even in this as God wills. Amen. Um, Abuna can be telling an aya for a sahla awal, butrus aya hamsa saba, Mulkin kula hamukum ali, and now yatani bekum. Um, Abuna can be ul aya dimanah and Robina be habena, we yatani bina, Mulkin el get loof aywa. زي ما قلنا ان هو ضحى بابنه الوحيد علشاننا فعلاقة اولادنا بربنا هتطرد اي افكار سلبية بيحسوا بيها سواء نبع من تفكيرهم او سمعوها من حد عشان كده لازم نصلي مع اولادنا ونقرأ معهم الانجيل من سن صغير ونعلمهم ان هو يتكلموا مع ربنا لانه مصدر الحب والفهم والتشجيع حتى لو مروا بلحظات فشل أو عدم نجاح فلو أولادنا فاهمين نفسهم كويس والآخرين وإن ربنا دايما موجود وإن إحنا وفرنا لهم حياة متوازنة وفيها ممارسة رياضة وأكل صحي ونوم كافي هيكون في نسبة قليلة جدا إن هم يتعرضوا لمشاكل زي القلق المزمن وكمان إن إحنا نكون دايما قدوة ليهم في تعاملاتنا وحياتنا وما نقارنهمش بأي حد ونوفر لهم حب غير مشروط كل ده ممكن مش هيمنع تماما ان هم يتعرضوا للقلق المزمن لكن الفرصة ان هم يتعرضوا للقلق هتقل جدا ولو حصل هيتعرفوا يتغلبوا على الشعور ده لان ساعتها هيكون اساسهم وعلاقتهم بربنا قوية وصح ربنا يبارككم ويبعد عنكم اي قلق وحزن uh, thank you, yeah, Abuna. Thank you, Marian. Uh, and, and thank you, all of you, for listening. Uh, let me close the share down. Uh, I guess if uh, anyone has any comments uh, or questions, we can ask them. As I was preparing that, um, it just reinforced with me how important my words and actions are uh, as I deal with children in our churches uh, and I love to be with the children uh, I love to sit with the children after liturgy and I've missed this very much especially the youngest uh, and in every dealing I have with every child and youth I want to represent the unconditional love and acceptance of God towards them uh, and uh, preparing even this short presentation helped to bring that back in focus for me that, that this is above all what our children need to experience uh, their value and the love of God through each one of us uh, as we deal with them hi Abuna. yes is that Peter's voice yes it is hi 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 thank you Abuna. I was wondering um, how would you, uh, it's just a, a force experiment, how would you separate uh, the actions of, of a child when they do something uh, bad and naughty? Uh, how would you 
how would you, how practically can you separate that from from still making them feel valued and loved? Yeah, I, I think that uh, when when we think of how God deals with us, we learn in the scriptures that He chastises us, He disciplines us, but He doesn't punish us because we are His children, and He wants us to come into a closer relationship with Him, not to be separated from Him. Mm. And so God will chastise us for our salvation. Uh, and so when we are dealing with a small child who has done something wrong, uh, we want to ask, uh, and one of my daughters is a primary school teacher, you know, uh, so she deals with a class of children that need to be disciplined, but also to feel safe and valued and loved. And I think that the way we deal, uh, deal with children in such a situation, the way we speak to them, uh, can either be something that uh, is something we are perhaps not proud of in ourselves, an expression of our own weakness, or it can be an expression of our love. Uh, uh, so uh, an expression of our weakness is where we find ourselves becoming angry, uh, where we say things that no adult should say to a child. You know, uh, uh, I hate you. You know, um, I don't want to see you ever again. You know, um, all of these things that come out from us, from our own brokenness. These are things that are, are especially for a young child, frightening and damaging. Uh, but for an older child, they just reinforce that sense that uh, we don't really love them. Uh, so how do we deal with a small child who is doing something naughty, but in a way that makes them understand they are still loved? I, I think that uh, we could read many of the books on, on parenting that, that usefully teach us uh, to speak uh, in a, a, a low voice, not to become agitated, mm -hmm. to explain clearly why we are disciplining them, how long the discipline is lasting for, and why it is taking place. Um, I, I am going to put you on the naughty stair for one minute because we are not allowed to stick toys into the video player. You know, that, that's how we discipline a child. Not by, not by shouting and screaming uh, and making the child feel threatened uh, and anxious. Uh, because although we don't mean it at all, as I said in, in that short presentation, that's how the child learns, if I do something wrong, it's going to become very scary. So it's best for me to do nothing at all, and then nothing bad will happen. Uh, so we can, we can learn an awful lot from secular psychological practice. Uh, but it seems to me that we, we need to learn how to apply the spiritual aspect as well, not as something optional, as I said, but something necessary. Uh, and so we have to be expressing to our children and, our, and our, our youth the love of God in all we do. And this means that the words we speak, uh, the thoughts we have, the actions we perform and commit towards our children and youth have to be ones of love. Um, they have to be expressions of uh, a discipline, not of a punishment, or of a concern uh, and not out of anger. Uh, and so if we feel ourselves at getting agitated, and, and, and I, I'm a parent also, you know, I'm not speaking out of a position of perfection. If we find ourselves getting angry and agitated, uh, then we understand that we're, we're no longer uh, dealing with our children in the appropriate way. Um, so I, I think reflecting on how we are acting, Understanding that the child needs discipline, which is, which is rather neutral, uh, passionless, uh, and the child doesn't need punishment quite in that way. And the child, certainly a young one, doesn't need to be made frightened by, by our behaviour. Does that help at all? Uh, yes, yes, thank you, Bina. Um, I can't imagine your little child ever being naughty. No, she's not, she's not, and uh, she, she's no trouble at all. No, good. Uh, but I, I do wonder, as she gets older, um, how, do I, how do we deal with her as she gets older? Well, we could imagine, for instance, uh, if, if we were at work in an employment situation, there are ways that we would discipline an employee or be disciplined ourselves. Uh, and we wouldn't expect it to involve our manager screaming and shouting at us, you know, and threatening us. Uh, we would expect him to explain, this is the problem, I asked you to do this and you didn't do it, uh, and this is going to be the outcome, you know, uh, and this is how we deal uh, in a disciplinary manner with the problem. Uh, we, we, we wouldn't expect lots of anger uh, and emotion to come out in, uh, in 
a disciplinary procedure at work or even in a difficult conversation with our boss about something. Uh, and, and really, to an extent, that's how we should be disciplining our children, making it very clear in a quiet way without becoming agitated. This is what has gone wrong. This is, this is the family rule you have broken. And these are the consequences, as I told you. you know? uh, and we are going to apply these consequences quietly. I'm not going to shout, even if you will shout. Uh, but this is what is going to happen. Um, and then the child understands why the discipline has happened. Uh, and it's not frightening. It may be inconveniencing. Uh, it may be annoying. Um, the child might become angry, but it's not something that the child becomes then frightened of, of doing things in case this, this terrible emotional outburst from the parent takes place. Um, I'm not speaking as, as a perfect parent by any means, but... but um, our words and our actions matter. Uh, and just as we would not expect to explode in front of one another, uh, we would try and deal with one another in love uh, uh, and, and with tolerance. Uh, even if we are disagreeing, we will try and find a way forward. So it seems to me that our relationships with our partners as well as our children uh, require this Christian attitude. As I said briefly in the presentation, the way I speak to my wife, the way each of you speaks to your partners also helps our children to form their vision of the world, you know. Uh, this is how men speak to women, perhaps, you know. That, that's not something we want our child to learn uh, if it's not respectful and kind and loving. Um, this is what married people do. They shout all of the time at each other, you know. So, so I'm afraid of entering into a relationship because this is what it means. Um, these are lessons we don't mean to learn, but they're lessons which our children can learn. Uh, we have a couple of questions here. <coughs> some, some of them are very, very important, but um, not, not, not entirely to do with, uh, with anxiety, but they're important. How can my child, nine years old, build a real relation with God, a personal relation? Uh, it, it seems to me that uh, very, very briefly, the most important thing is that we have a relationship with God and we show this relationship with God in our families. Uh, not just a, a relationship with rules, we pray this prayer in the morning, we, we say grace before we eat, but that our children see this is how we have a close relationship with God ourselves. Um, it has to make a difference in our life if we want it to make a difference in our children's life. So we then can invite our children to join our relationship with God instead of just telling them that they need to do something. Um, so what is, we have to ask ourselves, what is the experience of life with God in our household? Uh, is it one where God is central? Is it one where the love of God fills our relationships? Um, are we tolerant and kind and gentle to one another? Uh, do we remember all of the feasts and the fasts of the church so that our child sees these things matter to us? You know, uh, Do we sit in the morning around the breakfast table and pray for people, pray for our family and for people in the church so that our children see this is what we do? Uh, in the evening, perhaps, do we gather and pray as a family for our family problems so that our children see this is how we deal with problems? Uh, this, is, this is the first step, I think, if we want our children to have a relationship with God. They have to see that we have a relationship with God. Uh, how to deal with screen addiction, especially in these days. Um, there are many useful books and websites that will give us ideas. Um, ideally, we have a rule in the household uh, where children only have a certain amount of time. Uh, ideally, we can uh, have software on our phones and on our PCs where the internet is shut down for a certain time. So you have one hour and this is it. Um, we need to start introducing these rules because uh, screen addiction, as, as we've thought in, in other presentations, is a very uh, difficult and harmful thing. Uh, and one of the main causes of anxiety in children uh, is the relationships they have with others on the internet, online, on their phones. That is where much of the bullying takes place. That's where there is a competition to appear uh, as wonderful as possible. Uh, that's where when a child posts something and no one likes it, they feel utterly worthless. Uh, so, so introducing rules, and, and I think that we have even some video and audio of previous presentations on, on screen addiction, 
that it's worth looking at. Uh, having those rules is really important and to introduce them when the child is very young uh, and not to allow very young children to have uh, 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 certainly a mobile phone uh, and to only have very limited access. Uh, there, there are good resources that, that we can look at, thank God, uh, and our own churches are providing some. Do you want to say something, Miriam? Um, I think just someone asked if they can ask a question in Arabic. And oh, sure, sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I don't have, you know, on, on that phone, I, I cannot type in Arabic, but no, I, no, I no, said no, yes, no. I will translate. I'm yeah, not sure. If someone wants to <laughs> yeah. speak out a question in Arabic, uh, and Mariam will, will help me understand it. No? Okay. Thank you very, very much, Abuna. Thank you, Mariam. Yes, uh, thank you very, very, very much, Mariam. Thank you. Mariam. Thank you very much. Uh, and if, unless anyone else has any further questions, which it seems like, thank you, Abuna, you've been through most of them. Um, if you could just end with a small prayer and I'll end the call. Thank you very much. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you care for our children and our young people. Uh, and you have created each one of us gathered here and all the members of our families, uh, all the members of our congregations, every person in this world, you have created uniquely and specially and deliberately to be the person that they could become in union with you. Uh, and we pray that you will help us to value ourselves as you value us, so that we are able to value other people and especially our children as the precious gift which you have given us to care for in the time of their childhood uh, and infancy. Uh, help us to be more careful and observant of our words and actions, not only towards our children, but towards others, uh, the way we speak about others, the way we speak about you. Uh, help us to understand that these all come together and form the, the model and construction of the world which uh, our children create within themselves. Uh, if our children are, are subject to some of these conditions, uh, help us to be gentle and tolerant and encouraging towards them uh, and help us to try to uh, give them the truthful words that you speak about us and help us to be there for them uh, so that they know that we love them unconditionally and we value them uh, unconditionally, uh, whatever they are going through. Uh, thank you for each child represented in our congregations. Uh, each one is precious and we pray that in this time of pandemic and lockdown, you will preserve them in health and give us as parents and servants and priests wisdom and understanding to know how to help and encourage them. Uh, especially those who are struggling with studies, struggling with being away from friends, uh, help us to be an encouragement and a support to them. And for those who are servants in the Sunday school and who are trying to keep in touch with the children, uh, we pray that their ministry of service will be helpful and encouraging also. Uh, watch over our families, each one represented here and all of those in our congregations. Uh, lift this pandemic from the world according to your will and grant each one of us and our houses the experience of your presence uh, and of your love and compassion for us. Hear us now, our dear and heavenly Father, as we lift our voices again to you as your children and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil through Jesus Christ our Lord. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The love of God the Father, the grace of his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, and the communion and gift of the Holy Spirit be with you all and remain with you and all your families now and evermore. Amen. God bless you all, each one of you. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again, Mary. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you.